Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Hey, this week's tutorial is about the eyes and why the eyes are important in bird photography and why they need to be sharp. The eyes are important because the human mind searches for patterns, but it also searches for the sharpest part of an image and that's where it wants to land. If the eye is the sharpest part of the image, then our viewers will have an easier time look, looking at the photograph. You know, as humans, we connect with everything through the eyes. We look at people's eyes first. We look at animals' eyes first. So we have this black oyster catcher. And two things about it that you can tell right away is, one, because it has a dusky beak right here, it's a juvenile. And also this white feather edging shows us that it's a juvenile. But do you also know that we can tell that it's a female because the females have that speck in the eye right there? So the eyes can tell us a lot about a bird, not just whether it's male or female sometimes, but also bird's eyes can tell us about what the bird's thinking or what it's doing or what's going on with that bird. So this bird is staring me down because I made a noise inadvertently when I was photographing it. It had been preening and then I cropped really closely here because I wanted you to see the eyes and accentuate the eyes in this photo. The number one thing is to focus on the eyes. If you have a pop of color in the eye, like the emerald green of this double crested cormorant, and that eye has a highlight in it and it's sharp, then you've got all the components for our minds to look at the photograph through our eyes and land right there on the eye of the bird. And that's what we're trying to get people to do. And with this western tanager, the interesting thing about tanagers is that some birds, it seems like the eyes are larger in the head than other birds. And so we see that with this tanager, we see that with plovers. It's just another thing to be aware of. It's like if the eye is big in the bird, you definitely do make sure that it's sharp. And then here's an example of where I was using autofocus, and the autofocus point was right here right on the bird's beak and nose here. The eyes are blurry, but the beak is sharp. So I should have focused on one of the eyes, and then it would have been a more successful image. We always want to try to get a highlight in the eye. In this image of the Western Grebe, which it doesn't really have an, a highlight, but it does have really bright red eyes. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But most of the time when we're doing bird photography, we want to get a highlight in the eye. And whether that's a just a bright reflection of the sun or whether that's the horizon. Now, if you have the horizon reflected in the eye of the bird, you want to make sure the horizon is level here. And this one is slightly off. And then sometimes you can add a little bit of fill flash to get a highlight in the eye of the bird and that's what I've done here with this black turnstone. It was actually in the shade on the Washington coast but uh, you can see that at 1 40th of a second normally we wouldn't get a very good shot but with fill flash it froze the action and it brightened up the bird a little bit and it gave us a nice highlight in the eye. Now sometimes if you're doing like hummingbird photography and you have four flash units going off, you end up with too many highlights in the eye and some people will go in and clone these out and darken them or you can leave them because that's kind of how we took the picture. E either way is okay. And then number three here is use the head angle and the sun angle to your advantage. So this American Golden Plover, and this is one of the birds that has a larger eye on its head. I mean, the eye appears larger. And these are visual feeders, so they look for food and then they go walk over to it and pick it up. But because the bird's face is all in the sun here and there's a highlight in the eye, this image works. If the sun was not on here and this was all shadow through here, it would be hard to see the darker parts of the eye here. So having a good head angle is important so that you get some light around the area around the eye. And also, if you have a good sun angle, so the sun is behind you or your shadow is pointed towards the bird, then the face is going to be nicely lit up and bright. And you can see the little highlight here. So there's a double highlight here, one from the sun and one from the reflection of the sun. And that's okay in this situation because that's natural. And this is one of those cases where I did not saturate the eye of this bird at all. I didn't do anything with the eye of this bird, but it looks so red that it's unreal. And part of that is the bright morning light, and part of that is just the bird's eye. And here again with this red-throated loon, you can see that from the shadows here that the sun is coming in at this kind of an angle, and its face is perpendicular or a 90-degree angle to the sun. And that's kind of what we want, to brighten up the face so that we can get a clear view of the eye. 
And as in this Western Grebe photo, I've cropped so that we enhance the eyes of this bird. You can also experiment with different lens lengths. So this is with a 20 millimeter lens. And so these ducks were in the parking lot. Um, people had been feeding them. And so I just got down on my knees and this guy came up with all of his friends and he started pecking at the camera lens. And so I've got the eye of the bird as a dominant element in the frame. And that kind of helps create this image. Focusing on the eyes, getting the eyes sharp like this burrowing owl, and then cropping it so that the eyes really show up. And then with this burrowing owl, so this one is in the shade and it's a lot slower shutter speed, but here's the horizon and that's the sunrise. And so with this kind of an image, again, you want to make sure that the horizon is level in the eye, that there's that highlight there. I've blown this up quite a bit so it's not as sharp as it should be, but um, for an image taken back in 2006 or seven, it's not too bad. And then number five is saturate the iris, darken the pupil, and then use shadow and highlight sliders to, to enhance the bird. So with this Western Grebe, I've saturated the eyes and I've darkened the pupils. Sometimes I'll lighten this area out here, but I wanted the red as dark as possible because I want you to look at the eyes and I don't want you to notice that the beak is so out of focus. It's out of the depth of field range because I was using a 400 millimeter lens with a 1.4 extender on it and I was pretty close to the bird. And then here in this picture of this Arctic Tern, it's got a dark cap and it's got a very black eye and you can see the sun reflected in there. But just by using the shadow slider, I lightened up the cap here and increasing the amount of light that was on the black cap, we can see more of the eye and more detail of the eye. That's just a nice little trick that you can do for that. And then here, this is the raw file of this juvenile burrowing owl. Look at its eyes here. And so see how this is kind of a dull, pale yellow. One thing that you can do, lighten and saturate the iris darken the pupil. The pupil's not round anymore, and so I should go back in and change that or fix that. But it's just a concept that you can go in and lighten this and then darken that. When you do that, you're creating contrast, and contrast is basically what sharpening really is. And so by creating that contrast between the pixels, we have this image that the eye looks a little bit sharper in. And then modern technology can help us get a really good, sharp, focused eye. There's eye autofocus, there's bird detection autofocus, there's animal autofocus. All of those things will at some point kind of center in on the eye. And then here's a song sparrow that I took with the Olympus bird detect autofocus that came out recently. And it really did focus in on the bird and then it focused in on the eye. It worked out pretty well and why not use technology to our advantages and if they're going to create these nice things like eye detect autofocus, let's use them. And then number seven, to get a sharp eye, to get a highlight in the eye, to get all the things that we want to do, get a good point of view or perspective. Get eye level with the bird so you're looking into the bird's eye and you can see the pupil and the iris. And so really we're trying to, in some ways, look into the soul of the animal, you know, by being able to look really deeply into the eye. And if the eye is sharp and there's a highlight in there, people are going to connect with your photograph more. They're going to linger on it a little bit more. They're not just going to pass over it because the eye is, is not sharp. And then with this picture of the pelican, the eye is sharp and the feathers down in here aren't. I mean, these are, this is the a depth of field thing, but you know, this is sharp over here, but this is not sharp over, this is probably closer. So I have a very shallow depth of field, but as long as that eye is sharp, the depth of field doesn't really matter that much. And then here again, just getting really low, to the ground, to look into the bird's eye, getting eye level with it. And this one doesn't have a super bright highlight there. It's kind of a cloudy overcast day, but it's light enough through there that the bird looks like it has some energy and some life to it. And then here, kind of to sum everything up, so my shadow's pointed towards the bird. There's no harsh shadows on the bird's face here, and the eye is nicely lit up around it. It's got a highlight in the eye. All of those things add up to make a successful bird photograph. Hey, if you want to learn more about bird photography, pick up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography, the complete field guide for beginning and intermediate photographers and birders. I also have two guidebooks out now, The Birder's Guide to San Diego, and that's available on Amazon, and also The Bird Photographer's Guide to Bosque del Apache. It's available on Amazon as well. And hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out. 
Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.